this is a major milestone in the whole combi adventure. Um, big debate, huge debate in my mind about whether I should paint the combi or not. Uh, so I am going to experiment with painting the inside of the rear door as the least risky thing that I can uh, have a go at. So I have gone out, click and collect, because of course I can't go shopping. I've got this spray gun. It's a two millimeter nozzle, which apparently is the right size for primer. And it's got a, a gravity fed lid. This wasn't cheap, it was about, um, you know, more expensive ones, I think it's about 120 bucks. Um, you know, which is a fair price to pay for a sprayer. But um, you now my mates at VW Performance said that I should get a good one, so hopefully this is good enough. Um, so I've hooked it up to my compressor. Now my compressor, I know, is not good enough. So it's, uh, it's a two and a half horsepower and uh, about 60 liters. And I know that it's not gonna hold the pressure that I need, but I am gonna see how it goes. I've fitted a water filter, because I know it's got loads of rusty water in it. But if this all works out, I'll probably go and get myself a better compressor. So anyway, so here goes. So it's, I've looked on the can. The can says it's just an etch primer and it says 50% uh, thinner. So I've just got a general purpose thinner. So I've got thinner, I've got etch primer. I'm gonna put 50-50 in this cup. And I'm gonna, don't know how much to put in actually. It can take up to, there's a little things can take up to half a litre, so I'll probably just do like... I think I just had the pressure too high. Turned it down a bit, let's see how this goes. Well, that was exciting. I learned a great deal about spray painting in the last five minutes. That was brilliant. It's kind of worked. I've stuffed it up, but who cares? I've learned a lot about spray painting by doing. Come and have a look. Here it is. So, uh, it's turning grey, that's a good sign. Um, it's got loads of runs all over it, those are dripping paint, it's all a complete dog's breakfast. But I sussed out a few things about the spray gun, which I'll just show you. So there were three things that I got wrong. First of all, the actual air pressure on the pump. I had this set sort of at about 100, um, whatever the 100 is, and brought it, brought it right back to around just under 50 um, on the gauge here. So about... Uh, whatever that is there, about 0.4 PSI I think it is. So that was too strong to start with. And then the other thing is this determines how wide your spray is. And I think that determines how much paint comes through. And so twist this one way and there's more paint comes through, twist this one way and it spreads the fan. 
so you can do either a more condensed spray or not. And then when you twiddle this one way or another, it either makes the fan go that way or that way. And so depending on what you're spraying, you have to adjust all of those things. And I just got through 300 mils of paint. It was very quick. But um, something has to be going right because it's grey. So that's good. I'll let that dry in about half an hour or so I'll give it another go. So, it's worked. The, uh, the spray painter has worked with my compressor and the new spray gun and using the, uh, the primer and thinner that I've got um, I've learned a bit about how to spray paint and I'm actually quite happy with the way it's turned out and the experiment which is what's important about this piece has given me uh, some really good feedback on what will work and what won't so for example on this internal skin here you can see I really scuffed it up and I did it deliberately roughly just to see what it was like. This is going to be hidden in the final combi. There'll be a, um, some trim goes over this. <clears throat> so this was never going to be seen. I just wanted to see what it's like if you scuff up um, in a really rough way, whether the paint will cover it up. And it, it paints over it, but you can still see it. So the, the rough scuff, not a good idea. And in actual fact, you can see where I've done some work along here around my world. I'm going to have to go and re-bog that, uh, refill it and you can see the scuffing that I've done on the visible bits of paint so this will be visible and that's actually not fantastic so I'm going to have to go over this again so the finish is really important which is what everyone says but I'm now learning that that is that what everyone says is true and um, but otherwise the, the the finish that it's given otherwise I think is really nice so um, I've learned a bit about how to prepare the metal for painting I've learned a bit about spray painting but the bottom line is, my compressor works, I think, my spray gun works, and after a few duff attempts, I reckon I'll get good at it. You can see on here, there's um, down here, for example, you can see there's loads of drips. I sprayed too much paint on his drips here, there's drips down there, there's drips all over the place. So it's a really awful, shocking piece of painting by professional standards, but from my perspective, that is a victory. Well, I am uh, having now taught myself the basics of a spray gun when I was doing the back door. <clears throat> I've now gone along to um, the guys at Paint Mobile or Paint Mobile, uh, who uh, are my paint suppliers at the moment, and had a chat to them about what's going on. What I've sprayed onto the back of the combi was this stuff, Edge Primer, Black Edge Primer, and um, and that's the sort of thing that you should put onto bare metal <coughs> as a sort of a just to seal up the bare metal so it doesn't get rusty again. But uh, what they're suggesting is that to do the actual like the full paint of the combi, what I should do is use a slightly different primer. So the etch primer can still be used on the bare metal, but once the bare metal is all sealed up, to use this primer. So it's Concept Paints 1K Premier Primer, which is um, just has a bit more uh, body to it, so it'll uh, just be something you can sand off a bit better. Um, they've also given me, I've been using a deoxidine, a deoxidant, to treat the bare metal, and, uh, and that's good, which is, this is good because it converts the surface rust, um, deoxidizes it before you paint over it, and preferably before you take it out, but if you can't get all of it off, it uh, converts it a bit. So that, that's all fine in terms of bare metal preparation, but um, for actually doing the final coat, what they're saying is I should get it all nice and tickety-boo, maybe get some edge primer on the bare metal, then I'll need to prep wash it, um, which gets all of the oil and, and grease off, wipe that off, then use this slightly better primer, like a thicker, slightly thicker primer, which is what you use to build up the paint coats. And then I've also got some top coat acrylic and so I just got one litre of it we're going to try and do a colour match and so what we've done is they've mixed this up to be this VW Volkswagen L21H which is my colour code that I found in the combi they call it merino yellow um, 
it's a little bit different to the name that's written in the combi so I'll, I'll see if this is the right colour so I'm going to try this weekend to actually prepare the back door with this new, new system and put some top coat on and just see if it's the right colour and see if I can make it look nice I'm going to start on the back because I don't care if I stuff that up but then I'm going to try and do the front of the back door like the outside of the back door and see if I can make that look nice let's see how we go So the primer takes one part of thinner to two parts of primer. So we've got my thinner here. I'm going to put that 200 mil of thinner, and I believe that just makes it run through the gun better. And then this primer. This is going to make a right mess putting this in. And because I'm painting orange on the uh, top coat, they've recommended quite a, quite a light grey primer. Now I'm going to try and pour this in and I think this is going to go everywhere. Alright, I may need to find a better way of doing this. as bad as it could have been. So I've got my primer in here with thinner. I'm just going to check my settings. I'm going to do it. So I'm just using the prep wash uh, over the primer here just to make sure that it's all nice and clean before I put on the top coat and uh, it's just quite dusty at the moment because I've been doing some sanding of the outside but this will just make sure it's nice and clean ready for the top coat which is going on next so uh, this is indeed an exciting moment. I'm about to put on a test top coat. So I've just got a litre here of acrylic enamel paint, but in what I think is the correct colour. Let's have a look. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, lovely. That looks like it's about the right colour. What a lovely colour. Right, so I'm just going to put a bit, little bit in here. I'm probably going to put about and um, maybe two, three hundred mils, and we'll see if that's enough to cover the door. Quite exciting. So here we are, we've uh, finished our experiment with painting and uh, I would say that it's been a success. So uh, I'll talk you through what happened. So this is the inside of the back door and this is always my experimental piece where I was going to try different things and make my mistakes because frankly it doesn't matter if this doesn't go so well. And, um, and I've made loads of mistakes and it's been a really good learning experience. So what I've found is that um, um, I started off by learning how to use a spray gun with the primer and sort of worked that out. And then when I did the top coat, I wasn't quite sure if you were meant to thin it or not, put thinner into the paint or not. And on the paint part, it didn't talk about thinning. So I, my first spray I did with the orange color, I did with no thinner in the paint. And you can see that actually it's, it's all bobbly. And what happened was the paint sprayed on and just had loads and loads of quite big diddly dots all over it. 
and um, so on the bits that are visible I, I sandpapered off some of those but not many because as I say I don't really like um, well, that was a problem then I um, went on the internet discovered I should have put thinners into my top coat and uh, so then I, I put about um, the same amount of thinners as, as the acrylic and then it sprayed on beautifully uh, of course it's still got the lumpy stuff underneath but I've done uh, three coats now on here uh, it's done and the colour is spot on and when I did this piece here which was a bit smoother I did this um, with the thinner in and you may not be able to see but that is lovely that's great I'm really happy with that as a finish and it's not the sort of finish I want on the outside but it's certainly fine um, for this kind of interior piece so when I paint the outside of this tomorrow and I'm just starting to prepare the outside of this door as well so I've just been starting to take the paint off um, I'm going to try and make a really nice smooth glossy finish on the outside finishes and that's really the final bit of the experiment but check out this colour so that's the old one that's the original colour and this is the new colour perfect I love it so this has obviously aged about 40 years and so this one's a little bit darker but I'm totally happy that is a really nice colour so the colour matching is a go.